Well, what do you know? The Spurs finally won a game. The four or five game losing skid is finally over. Hell to the yeah, to the baby. Lone Star DeMar finally hit a much deserved game winner to help the, the team win. Like, it's unbelievable. But, and it's no surprise we saw no young Devo tonight. You know, our drafted number 11 pick, Devin Vassell. But somehow we found a way to win without him playing. But I, at the same time, there's no excuse that he should, he's, he, that he should be getting like three, only three minutes at maximum and no Trey, no living La Vida Luca. And yet we get too much of Rudy and Patty. Rudy, I mean, Patty, I can understand because he's been with us for the longest time. But get rid of Rudy's garbage bitch ass. I mean, I want to see more La Vida Luca. Trey, Young Devo, and less of Rudy and Patty. Maybe a little bit of Patty since every once in a while he can actually do stuff. But Rudy, he's, this isn't 2014 anymore. Time for you to go. Time for you to go. Anyway, so not much you could say about the Spurs game. So therefore, and the NASCAR race reviews are back starting today with the Virginia 500 Martinsville race review. And I kept thinking... the. Uh, Talladega was next weekend, but no, Pontiac Excitement 400 is next weekend, so let's talk about that. First off, Xfinity, I only saw the first few laps of it on Friday night before the rains came and pushed it to earlier today. It sucks I slept through it because, you know, my body was too tired to wake up for it. So, uh, congratulations to Josh Berry on getting his first career in NASCAR Xfinity Series win. And then you have the fight between teammates Joe Graff Jr. and Gray Galding. I don't know how in the hell that got started, but nobody's nobody's sure how that got started there um, cuz as soon as the fox cameras like put it on the put it on them in the put it they they're, they're the Fox put their cameras in the garage and it like it showed like the teammates beating the shit out of each other after the race. So that's two races in a row we've had a fight break out after the race. The first one was between my boys, Gregson and Hemrick in the pits in Atlanta, and this time it was between two teammates at Martinville in the garage. They were trying to clock each other like Bob Barker is what they were trying to do. Or Noah and Daniel, speaking of which, finished second and third. Noah won the, the little dash for cash thing, which um has been a thing for a long time in this series, dating back to the Nationwide Banner. Back when I lived in Brook Park in the Sandhurst House, I had to explain it to my mom today about Gregson and Hemrick doing it a dash for uh, like, like become like Gregson winning the dash for cash, and how he and Hemrick are eligible when they were on the Aaron's 312 at Talladega in a few weeks. And Riley was running pretty good too, but he ended up 29th after cutting a tire down. So. I really didn't miss much in the Xfinity race other than those things. But the Winston Cup race, I mean, I missed the end of state, the continuation of stage one and most of stage two. I turned on the TV when stage two was getting ready to get, when, I, when stage two was finishing up. And Austin got a penalty for pitting outside the box, but luckily he got his lap back and ended up 16th, even getting damaged in the whole Bubba Wallace, Brian Newman incident. And Austin just kept it on the track with the fucked up door. That I that takes a lot of guts to like stay on the track even with the door all fucked up like that. But like, at the same time, it's Martinville, so it makes sense. Nobody gives a shit. Like Ricky Craven said in that lightning challenge in NASCAR Thunder 2003, nobody gives a shit what your car looks like as long as it comes home in what, either in one piece or in the winner's circle. So, same Bristol, Richmond, where we're going next week. Richmond, same thing. Pontiac Excitement 400 next week, but I'll discuss that a little, a little later. I just want to talk about what I got to see in the race today. Like, up to, like, I got to watch all of Stage 3. So, first off, I'm, I'm going to just want to say I'm glad that imposter and Brett Bodine's number ended up taking another L today. Because fuck that guy. All right, but, like, Stage 3, before it eventually calmed down, they were crashing up a storm. Um, it was like every time they restarted th three or five laps after taking a restart, they would all crash and pile up either into the wall or into each other. Like, I was eat like. I, I got my breaded steak today that I was supposed to have for the Cracker Bell 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. But, you know, as I was getting dinner together and, like, getting my drinks together, then that big 15-car pileup happened on the back straightaway. I had to go upstairs and tell my grandparents, and I jokingly said to them and my mother... Who says the big one only happens at Daytona and Talladega? You see, it happens all, all, all other places, too. 
It's just not as fast. You know, the Martinsville, you know, they're going 90 to 100 miles an hour. Daytona and Talladega are going 180, 190, even 200. So they threw the red flag to clean that up, and this race ended in the into the darkness. First time in the in the history of the Virginia 500 Spring Race that whenever it was running the day due to like regardless how it was running the day, it would like run into the night because usually nowadays it, it when the weather is not a factor, it's usually the Virginia 500 and and the, at, at night time the whole time from start to finish, and then the old Dominion 500 in the chase in the fall it usually starts off in the day and like in the in the midday, starts at midday, but it goes on for so long that it ends at night. And this became a thing starting in 27, in the 2017 race, you know, when like, when that incident with Chase and the Jackass imposter and Brett Bodine's number tangled when I went to Cedar Point with my dad and his family that day. Yeah, we all remember. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. So therefore, the, the Old Dominion 500 has been ending at night since 2017. The last time it started and ended in the day was 2016. I barely remember it, but I probably was sleeping through that whole thing. Around the time Lab Rats got canceled. But after the 15 car pile up, everything calmed down. And then all, and then Newman screwed over Bubba. I mean, I mean, I can't, I mean, I used to hate Newman, but then I really can't hate him again after, you know, what, how him almost dying at last year's Daytona 500 gave me a change of heart. So, therefore, I really can't call him irrelevant because of the fact that, one, well, I did say that on Twitter, like, Toxic Fungi 13, you know him for the rambling and the NASCAR Let's Plays of Chase for the Cup 2005, the shittiest NASCAR game ever made. Of course, Thunder Thousand 3 Career Mode and Thunder Thousand 4 Johnny Benson Season Mode on the Xbox. He has regular Xbox. He doesn't have a PS2. He has it on Xbox. I have those same games for the PS2. Subscribe to him. Link is in the description. So... And, of course, you know, I did say get Ryan Newman's bitch ass off the track. And but the thing is, I mean, he was he was annoying the piss out of me, like, running out, running into people like that. But at the same time, I, just because he did that, I just can't go back to hating on him. Like, I used to. I already did that once, and that's a plenty. I can't control how Toxic Fungi 13 or other people feel about him. And most of the people calling him irrelevant, if anything, are more of the Bubba fans than him and I. You know, before them Toxic and I. Toxic and I are not really caught, I'm not really hating on Newman as much as the Bubba fans that are talking. Because of the fact that, you know, Bubba and, and Newman tangled and spun Bubba around. It's like the second race in a row. You know, Bubba spun out late in the race and no caution flag. And trust me, I already know the boomers are out in full force. You know, Bubba's rent free haters that are boomers and like crazy ass rednecks, you know, like that like that neighbor was on on a million little things like two weeks ago. We know the one whose car Eddie destroyed when he was defending his son, you know, Theo, the Asian kid, Tristan Bonnet. Yeah, that kind of, that level type of shit when it comes to being a redneck. And then, of course, you had the Rick Ware racing drama. I fucking hate this this trash can team with the passion. They have no business being in NASCAR whatsoever, let alone being us on the racetrack every week, you know, as slow, fucking slow as they are. If the charter system didn't exist... Noah and Ty would have raced in the 500 instead of those assholes, and along with, you know, you know, Mickey Mouse, 1990 Mickey Mouse 500 winner Derek Cope. It wouldn't have been in the Daytona 500 if the charter system wasn't a thing. His bitch ass, all of Rick Ware, maybe Quinn Huff would have went home instead of, like, competitive cars like Ty and Noah. You know, back to all that thing. I just hope eventually NASCAR realizes realize this problem, and after twenty after this twenty twenty one season, they revoke all of Rick Ware's charters and force them to shut the resource them to shut the fuck down. That way, their bitch asses can be out of NASCAR for good. Fuck Rick Ware. Fuck fuck Cody Ware. Fuck James Davidson. Fuck all of Rick Ware Racing and everything they fucking stand for. Those assholes need to go. Anybody defending them needs to be checked for brain damage. That's all I can say. Like, oh, but I like them. They're trying their best. But I like having them around it because, you know, it can't, yo, shut the fuck up. I'm not saying that they're in the drag lead anymore. I'm just talking about people in general. Like, I seen it on Twitter saying, like, oh, that they're trying hard, hard. No, they're not trying. If they were trying, they'd be at least semi competitive. You know, they want to, people say they like having them around, you know, and like, okay, so therefore you, you conduct, so the people who said that, like, 
I've seen Pacif, some people say this on Twitter in the, in, the, in the past year. They like having them around all for like, you know, when they name bullshit reason as to why. So in other words, by that logic, they like condone having slow, like r r slow ass rolling chicanes get in the leader's way and like impact the out, like change the, and manipulate the outcome of the race. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Rick Ware Racing needs to go, period. You're just as bad as them if you're going to defend them or say anything positive about them. So, Yeah. And then you had my dad's favorite driver, Daniel Suarez, caught catch fire. There was some temper flaring on the racetrack. And, you know, and believe it, and surprisingly, it, there was no fights in the garage post-race after the Winston Cup race, which is a miracle. Suarez was throwing shit at William Byron. People were throwing shit on the racetrack. But, and, you know, when you, when you get a beer thrown at you from the grandstands, uh, after you win a race, you know you've made it. Truex got a beer thrown at him. Must have been a salty ass drunk. Must have been a salty drunk ass Denny fan. You know, or should I say a drunk a, a drunk a drunk ass salty Dennis fan? You know, who would like that imposter in Brett Bodine's number? Like seriously. I know some cool people who do, and not all Hamlin fans are bad, but there's a lot of them who are. But. I just know, I mean, I used to like him in the beginning, but then as of late when he started stinking up when last year, when he and Harvick were stinking up to win stink ups here, they said, I've seen enough of these assholes. So therefore, I'm glad Hamlin didn't win shit today, and I'm glad that Harvick's stinking, like, you know, bitching, you know, stinking it up like Terry Labonte, and he hasn't done shit, what doesn't done, done jack shit this year. And if this age is poorly, blah, blah, I'm, I'm, Okay, what I'm about to say here, if this age is poorly, so be it. I hope that both Hamlin and Harvick go winless all of this year. Because, you know, I'm glad we're seeing the downfall of Harvick, you know. That I knew in the beginning, when I was a little boy, when he drove the 29, I knew there was something I didn't like about him. Well, yeah, sure, it proved it. Here we are. So, yeah. Um... Next week is the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond. I wish that shit was running the daytime and not at not, not I mean, oh no, I fucked up like Fabrizio Berto. I wish that sh I wish the shit was still run at night rather than the daytime. Cause I like, do I like it better when the Pontiac Excitement 400 was at night instead of the stupid ass day? At least they kept the Monte Carlo 400 in the fall for the chase at night for my best friend Brindley Kerr's birthday, where she'll be Bobby Labonte, 18 years of age, when they run the, uh, the Monte Carlo 400 this year, which is why probably come next year, my dad or I gonna go are gonna my dad and I are gonna go to the Monte Carlo four hundred for the chase so we can enjoy our, our a real night race, not that wanna be twenty twelve Daytona five hundred, which doesn't count as a as a true night race in my book because that Daytona, like I said many times in the past, the Daytona 500 is meant to, like, start and end at end the daytime, not start in the daytime, end at night. That's meant for the Firecracker 400, like, summer summer race. Now, nowadays, it's regular season finale around my mom's birthday weekend. I even told my dad, well, we're not going to do the Pontiac Excitement 400. We were going to, but then they started putting that shit in the daytime again. I'm like, fuck that. I want to go to a real night race, and we're going to go to the Monte Carlo 400 in 2022 when my sister go, go, goes to live there you know well um stuff i can't talk about on here so i don't want to get her in trouble but she's moving there for like you know for like to start a new chapter of her current future you know what i'm saying but that's all i'm gonna say about that but i will see you all tomorrow when the spurs play um i'm gonna check who do we play next? Okay, we play the Magic next. I swear, we if we don't beat them, motherfucker, you know, those fucking nobodies that you're going to see me post on, like, Twitter or and Instagram, like, either later on tonight or sometime tomorrow before the game, then... Yeah, if we don't beat these nobodies, I swear, we all fucking riot. But I will see you all tomorrow for the Spurs Magic game. Excuse me. Have a good night tonight and a better day tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Good night.